Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. So this morning, my plan is to get some stuff done. I've been really busy. I've had a lot going on. And so I need to get started on cleaning out my veggie garden, cleaning out my annual pots, um, kind of just sprucing things up for the upcoming winter season when I don't think I'm going to want to be out here very much cleaning up. I want to get this this totally overgrown veggie garden definitely cleaned up today and then hopefully we'll be able to go probably later this week to find some transplants for some fall um fall veggies, right? So I live in Northern California zone 9B. We still don't have a first frost till December 4th. I think if I start with some transplants, I'll be able to prop probably get some uh, production going before the first frost. And then I'm hoping to find some frost tolerant varieties that maybe I can even leave in a little bit longer. I was even thinking of bringing, let's see if you guys can see it, bringing the stock tank right here, this extra stock tank that Home Depot accidentally delivered to me and then gifted me. Um, I was even thinking about bringing that into my greenhouse and starting some lettuce or something like that. Um, so it is 49 degrees right now. Uh, it's about 8.30 in the morning. I cannot wait for, what is it, daylight savings time or the opposite. Um, I think it's this weekend and then it should start getting lighter in the morning because right now it's already almost nine o'clock and you can see it's still, it's... <laughs> It's like dawn, you know? <laughs> so um, I'm ready for some more light in the morning. Of course, I love it. I like it when it stays light at night, but I do more stuff in the morning. I'm more of a morning person, so I really like having the light in the morning, and I feel like I'm delaying coming out into the garden and getting stuff done because I'm waiting for it to get light enough. Um, so anyway, my goal for today is just to get this whole area cleaned up, mainly my tomatoes, which are pretty much done. I'm getting a little, you know, a little bit of production still, but they're not very good because it's getting cold tomorrow the low is supposed to be 43 so I think I think they're done I do have to say my absolute favorite one I know I've told you guys this before is this orange one right here it's called the Bellini tomato from proven winners I grew it from seed um, it is fantastic it was by far our favorite tomato all season long it was so sweet it was so yummy and it was a really good grower I did grow it on this little to tour trellis right here, um, which, you know, it's not the most proper thing to grow a tomato on. It's not a tomato trellis. I might change it out for a real tomato trellis next year because I am planning to grow this tomato again. It was absolutely delicious. But as it's gotten colder there, um, you know, the skins are harder or tougher and it's just, it just hasn't been as good. But I just wanted to point that out that that was, that was hands down my favorite tomato um, all season and my whole family's favorite tomato. We always were clamoring over the Bellini tomatoes whenever that they were ready. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set up a camera. I'm gonna start with this uh, veggie garden. I am gonna leave my purple hyacinth bean that's growing up all over here. I'm just gonna leave that because it's not done yet and it's still so pretty. I'll probably clean it up a little bit. I'm really hoping to get, yeah, I got to put my hose back. Um, <laughs> I'm really hoping to get my uh, bougainvillea trained up over at the win window. I haven't been trimming this whole piece right here. And the reason for that is because I want to train it up and over the window, but I have to put in some more wire and some more eye hooks. So I want to get to that today if I have time. And then I also want to clean out these pots. So then that way, this whole section of my yard will be done and ready for the fall and winter. So let's get going.
Okay, so I got the veggie garden cleaned out and that really wasn't too bad. It only took me about 30 minutes. So you can see it just looks so much cleaner. It is so satisfying doing fall cleanup in the garden. I don't, I just, I love it. I really, really enjoy it. It's just, you know, the new season, the next thing to come and then starting to think about what's next, right? I just love it. So I did leave in my silver thyme right there. That's a perennial for me. My chives, that's a perennial. And then this flat leaf parsley, I'm actually not sure if that's a perennial or not, but it's still doing really well. And we use that all the time. Um, so I'm just going to leave it there. I did clean out all my tomatoes. So you can see what my tomato, I don't know, to tours my tomato cages look like. They're not real tomato cages, <laughs> but I just thought that they were so pretty when I saw them at the garden center. So I grabbed them and they work pretty well. They're fine. I like that I now can really see my fountain, my beautiful Juliet fountain. Um, this is from Campania International. You can purchase this fountain online for double the price of what you can get it at like a local garden center, but you have to find it at a local garden center. You have to find a garden center that will carry it. I ended up having to go up to Reading where my parents live to get this fountain and it honestly took me like seven months to get it. Um, but a couple of you have emailed me and said, I found it online and it's like over a thousand dollars. Don't spend that money. <laughs> it's not worth over a thousand dollars, I don't think. But if you can get it at a local garden center, it's beautiful. You can see I did cut back the bougainvillea right here. I was thinking, I, I think I'm going to leave this bougainvillea next year. This is one plant right here. And then there's another plant right here. This one, I think, gets too much water, honestly. And so it never really blooms. It really hasn't bloomed at all. And I don't really need it underneath the window kind of like that. So I might take this particular one out. Um, but I'm going to think about that next year. I'm not going to worry about it. What I want to do now, okay, so now that I've finished this, my plan is, is that I'm going to come in with some compost and then I'm going to till it up um, and then plant some fall crops, like I said. But what I want to try and get done today I think I still have time is um you can see here my bougainvillea well I don't know this bougainvillea is so thorny I'm <laughs> it's so hard look can you guys see the thorns and these are baby thorns these aren't even the big thorns um that they there's a thorn right there and if they poke you oh my goodness they hurt so you can see right here I do have a wire and this wire is what my bougainvillea is hanging on the bougainvillea won't just climb a wall you have to give it something to hang on so if you see up here can you see that <laughs> I'm sorry there is an eye hook in the wall let's see if I can find another one oh well they're growing well there's an eye hook in my stucco right there can you guys see that right and so what we did how we how we drilled it in and granted please listen to me when I say this I am not a professional I am just a homeowner that doesn't mind drilling holes into stucco because <laughs> I want to use my house I want to enjoy my house um, you know while I'm here and so I'm not afraid of drilling holes into stucco as long as I do it correctly and so what we found um, is we take a, a drill and we drill a pilot hole and then we put one of those plastic anchors in and then you can screw in the eye hook and then that's how you hook up uh, the wire to the eye hook we haven't had any cracking we did the same thing to hang our hose link right here I did put a um Let's see if you can, I did put a backer board right there. So I secured the backer board into the stucco and then I secured the hose link onto the backer board. And that's how I got this thing on here. Um, but with the eye hooks, I just drilled into the stucco and it's so far it's worked really, really well for us. I haven't noticed any issues. And if I do have any issues, I'll just pay to get it restuccoed. You know what I mean? Like I want to use my garden. That's how I feel about it. Um, I want to use my home for how I want it. So. I'm just personally not afraid of drilling into stucco or anything like that. And I know a lot of people completely don't agree with me. So just remember, I'm just an amateur homeowner. Talk to a professional. <laughs> so having said that, what I want to do is I want to extend up. I want to drill another um, eye hook over here. Oh, I hope I have them in the garage. I'll have to go look. Um, so I want to drill another one over here. And then I want to drill another one over here so I can start taking this these long tendrils of the bougainvillea and putting it up and over my window because my goal is is to get the bougainvillea to grow 
up and around the windows and have everywhere that you see stucco actually be bougainvillea. I think that that will be beautiful. So I'm going to try and get that done now. I think I think I gotta go in the garage and see if I have the equipment. I didn't even think about that till just now. Okay, so I found one in the garage, only one. I feel like I had more. I feel like they're always, I, I don't have a spot to store these. I need a spot to store them because I use them all the time. So I here's the plastic anchors that I normally use. I have a whole box of these, so I don't need any more of these. So I thought, okay, well I can just install one and then next time I'm, I'm at the store, I'll get more, but I'll have all my stuff out, like the ladder and my drill and all that kind of stuff. So I figure I might as well just run to the store really fast, pick up, you know, two or three more of these, and then I can do it all at once. So I'm going to run to the store really fast. I'll be right back. Okay, so here's what they had. So this is the one that I had originally, and I know that this size fits those green plastic anchors that I have. They only had one in that size. So you can see it's called a lag eye bolt. The important thing is the quarter inch because that's the width or the diameter of it. I don't know the name of it. Um, and then the three and three quarters inch is the length of it. So I ended up getting three of these, which were the quarter inch by five inch. So they're a little bit longer, so they're gonna sit further away from that the wall but I'm okay with that the most important thing is that is the width of them so I ended up getting four more you know at least I will have these I, I gotta find a box so that I don't lose them in the garage but I decided to take a quick trip around the garden center and look what I found they must have gotten a new shipment in of lamium and I have been waiting to get my hands on some lamium so I got a whole flat of it this kind is called orchid frost it's basically the purple they have purple blooms so I was planning to put more of these underneath my limelight hydrangeas just on the other side of my pool that I'm working today and I haven't been able to find them at the store so I'm glad I found them and then I'll just I mean it should take me five minutes to pop them in the ground so I will get to this today as well all right let's get back to work I am all done for today. I am feeling accomplished. I feel like I got a bunch of stuff done. Let me show you everything that I did. So first off, I cleaned out the veggie garden. I think it's looking really good. I think I want to redo the drip in here. Right now I have kind of a grid pattern with my drip and I think I just wanna bring a hose and then do one emitter to each vegetable I have in here. I think this area is getting a little too much water and it's wasting water. And then it's giving this bougainvillea way too much water. So as I was working, I was thinking about it. I think that that would be 
a good way to decrease the amount of water that I'm using in this area. Over here, I have my bougainvillea that I think is looking so good. So I have a vision. I've actually seen it on other houses in town, you know, when I've gone to people's houses for work. Um, I'm a home health physical therapist by trade. So I go to people's houses. I love it because I get to see their garden. And I've seen a lot of people have this bougainvillea kind of trained all along their back wall or not their back wall, one of their walls. So that's kind of what I'm going for. But because I was waiting for it to grow because these bougainvillea, I don't know how many I have, one, two, three, four, five, I think I have five. Um, they started off pretty small. They were only about a foot tall. So they've been growing for a couple years now. And as they've been growing, I've been training them up uh, wire up here, like I was telling you guys earlier. So it's kind of taken a while. You can see as I'm letting it grow, they kind of, they kind of look really sloppy and they kind of grow out into the, into the garden where I don't want them, but I have to let this grow so that I can have a long piece that I can train up. Um, and with Boogie Bougainvillea, it's kind of hard. You can't, you can't twirl it totally around the wire. You have to wait for a big piece and then attach it to the wire. It's hard to explain. Um, it's just not as easy as some other climbers, but that's okay. So I've got, I've added some uh, eye hooks and some wire up here. And then I finally was able to start training some stuff up there. You can see I attached it to the wire. I need to find something a little bit better than that bright green stuff, maybe something black or something like that. And so you can see as I pull it up, this is the back of the leaves now. And so it doesn't look very good, but it will grow um, to where I can start seeing the front of the leaves and then it'll start looking pretty. And then now that I have it up where I need it, I can keep this area nice and trimmed and then hopefully it'll start flowering closer. I did notice though that I have a leak here and that is super frustrating because I'm dealing with having too much water and because I had all this bougainvillea here I didn't even notice that there was a leak. So we usually just leave this turned on. This is attached to my hose link um, and then we turn on the hose link uh, for water. But yeah so this has been leaking the whole time. So this is the hose link attachment. I don't know if it's just not tight enough or what but I'll have to I'll have to troubleshoot that. So I just kind of cleaned out this whole area, kind of kept it growing up along there, and I will just continue to keep doing that. And I have a feeling it's gonna take me a couple years to start looking like how exactly how I want it to look. But at this point, I feel like I'm getting somewhere. I feel like at least this part right here is really starting to look like what I had in mind. And then I do have to come over here and I still have to do this area over here, but I'll get to that. And then otherwise I was able to plant some of the lamium that I, actually all of the lamium that I purchased and I'm planting them underneath these limelight hydrangeas. So I have a ground cover underneath here and I'm hoping that they're gonna fill in and they'll, it'll be kind of like a silver carpet underneath there is kind of what I want it to look like. So it was really easy cause I already had the drip in. I had just amended the soil. So the soil was all nice and loose and fluffy. So that was a super easy job, but I'm glad I got that done cause I've been wanting to find more lamium for here and now it's there and now it can have all fall all winter and all spring to grow so that is it it's wednesday so it's minimum day at the girls school so they're actually going to be home pretty soon so i gotta go and finish all the other stuff i need to do so i hope you all enjoyed this and i hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today